Welcome back. In our previous video, we signed up for a free Figma account, set up our free starter team, created a project, and our first file. In this video, we're going to give you an overview of the Figma editor. The editor is divided into four main sections. The canvas, where we'll do most of our designing, the toolbar, the right side panel, often referred to as the properties panel, and the left side panel, often referred to as the layers panel. The largest area in the center of our screen is the canvas. Each frame, shape, and text layer used in your design will be placed and customized here. The toolbar extends across the top of the screen. In the upper left corner of the toolbar is the menu. You can expand the menu to find various functions, preferences, and even a search bar to quickly find the item you're looking for. To the right of the menu is the Move tool, and within the drop-down menu is the Scale tool. The Frame tool and the Slice tool are next. If you're familiar with other design tools, you can think of frames as a more powerful version of artboards. Next, we have all of our vector shape tools, followed by the Pen tool, Pencil tool, Text tool, and the Comments tool. In the center of the toolbar, we can see the name of our file, by default, this is named Untitled. We can click on the file name to change it. Let's rename this to Fitma, the name of an up and coming athletic clothing company. To the left of the file name is the name of the containing project, Getting Started, which we created in the previous video. The center of the toolbar is contextual and will change depending on what you have selected. When nothing is selected, the project and file names will be shown. There is also a small drop-down menu next to the file name, which contains useful actions like accessing the version history of your file. Moving to the right of the toolbar, we can see our avatar. If other people are in the file with us, we'll see their avatar here. Next to that is the share button, where we can share our file with other people by directly inviting them via email address or by sharing the link to our file. Being able to share the most up-to-date version of your file with just a link makes Figma a powerful collaboration tool. We'll cover sharing and collaboration more in another video. This is also where you can access the embed code for this file if you want to embed it in another website. Next, we have the Present button, which opens Presentation View. Presentation View is where you can view your design as an interactive prototype. We'll also cover presentation view more in a later video. Last, we have a menu to adjust a variety of zoom in view settings. We won't go into all of these right now, but be sure to check the link in the description to read more about them on our help center. The third section on the right is the properties panel. This is where we adjust the various properties of objects in our designs. By clicking on the other tabs, we can also edit the properties of our prototypes and inspect iOS, Android, and web code when we're ready to hand it off to development. By default, with nothing selected, the Properties panel will display the background property of the canvas, as well as local styles and export settings in the file. We haven't created any styles or export settings yet, so these are blank empty states. We can click the color swatch for the background property of the canvas and adjust its color by using the color picker. We'll leave this as a default color for now. While designing, the Properties panel will change to show you any available properties for the layers you have selected. To the left of the canvas, we have the Layers panel. Every frame, shape, and text object we draw on the canvas is also a layer and will appear in the Layers panel. To demonstrate this, let's select the Frame tool from the toolbar and then select the Google Pixel 2 frame from the preset options on the right side. Figma will automatically place a Google Pixel 2 frame into the center of the canvas, but it will also now appear in the Layers panel on the left. If we select the Rectangle tool from the toolbar, we can click within our frame to draw a rectangle shape. In the Layers panel, we now see the rectangle is a child layer of our frame. With our rectangle selected, we can see that some contextual tools in the toolbar are now available, and many new properties are available in the Properties panel on the right. 
Starting at the top, we have alignment and distribution, position, dimensions, rotation, corner radius, constraints, layer blend mode, fill, stroke, effects, and export settings. We'll learn about these properties in more detail throughout the series, but you can also click the link in the description to read more about these on our Help Center. If we look at the top of the Layers panel, we can see that there are additional options available. The Layers tab has been the Active tab. To the right, we have Pages, which are used to keep our design files organized. You can use Pages to separate your components, different design iterations, or designs for different screens or devices. You can click to expand the Pages panel and create new pages. To the left of that is the Assets tab. The Assets tab is where you can find all of your design components within this file or from any enabled team libraries. Components are one of the most powerful tools to elevate your work to the next level. We don't currently have any components, so in the next video, we'll teach you what they are, how to make them, and how to use them. If you haven't signed up for your free Figma account yet, click the link in the video description so that you can follow along in the next video. Thanks for watching.